perspectives on this? Yeah, I, I, it's um, you know, might just gone today. Um, you know what? What's interesting with Marcy was saying, which is part of the reason I think her blog, Fire Dog Life, is so successful at doing a lot of these uh, sort of issues that tick them off, which we try to do on my blog as well, is you've got to find an angle to make your story relevant to people or the people you're trying to impact. Um, you know, Marcy could have written a blog post about, did you know that traffic cops are unionized? And that your airplane you flew on today, that was a union captain. You gonna blog about that? Yeah, no. Um, took huge story with video that everybody was talking about, a plane landing in the Hudson and you know, nobody died, it was amazing. And all of a sudden it reminds you, guess what? Everybody at each step of the way was unionized and they, they, they were the heroes. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Um, it, it's not an obvious point because I, I, a couple conversations over the last couple days were kind of interesting with regards to this. I was talking to, you may even be here, uh, a guy working with the unions who said to me, you know, what do we do with the big national blogs? We try to get our issues covered. A lot of them they won't. They think they're too local. Like we've got this issue in southern Illinois with, uh, I may get this wrong, but I think it was uh, uranium workers or something. And some dangerous issue going on there. And he was like, you know, but, but that's kind of too local of an issue for you to cover on your blog. I mean, my blog, like Marcy's, we cover national politics. But we'll do local if there's a national implication and, you know, it's interesting at a national level. And I was like, yeah, I mean, you know, uranium mining in Illinois is a bit esoteric for a blog that deals with, like, day to day in Washington. And I was like, well, tell me more. Well, you know, I mean, Honeywell's involved. I was like, oh, well, that's getting interesting, you know, a big company. And you know the chairman or the president of the company or whatever, you know the day this big accident happened or whatever it was, was on a plane with Obama flying to India. Like he didn't even care. He just left the company behind and he's with Obama on Air Force One. I was like, is Obama on Air Force One? That's interesting. <laughs> you know, and all of a sudden the story started getting a little sexier from a political blog perspective because you know the blogs have had a lot of concerns about Obama sucking up to corporate interest a little too much. You've got a corporate CEO who's abandoning a disaster happening at one of his plants or one of his mines or whatever. The president seems to be assisting him a little bit. Um, you know, it, 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 it jobs going abroad. I mean, there's so many angles now that, um, as a political blogger, all of a sudden you're, it's getting interesting, and it's no longer some workers at a mine in southern Illinois. And you know, I'm in Illinois and I care, but honestly, I can't go writing about just miners having a bad day on my blog. It, that's not what we cover when you only can write so many things a day, or as a reporter, or whoever you are. But you take Marcy's approach, or what I, what I finally gleaned out of this guy, and all of a sudden you're making it interesting. Um, the second story I was gonna say was something we had blogged in the gay community the last couple weeks. Not, well, it didn't start as a union issue, interestingly enough, but we had a, our, our big anti-defamation group was called CLAT. And we found out that they had written a letter to, the, I think, the FTC, on behalf of the AT&T T-Mobile merger. And a lot of us kind of scratched our heads and said, why does our you know, group that deals with reporters using you know, the wrong word about gay people in a story or whatever, writing an official opinion on the AT&T T-Mobile merger, who cares? Um, they gave all sorts of weird answers about how, well, if, it, if they merge, then we'll have better internet, and all our gay activists will be more effective, I kid you not, will be more effective online. OK, that's just bizarre. You know, and then the right way would be more effective online too. Like, what are you talking about? Um, now, part of the danger I'm talking about here is if you just try to force issues together and pretend like, oh, we all get that we're all in the same camp, people are going to scratch their heads. Whether they're my readers or whether they're your activists, you know, plans members, they're going to say, what the heck? You know, who paid you off to do this, right? Well, the next day, uh, Gay and Lesbian Chamber of Commerce, we've got one, and uh, Private Work, which I guess is part of AFL, I'm going to say. Um, they put out a press release, I think it was joint, talking about the implications for gay employees at T-Mobile, because T-Mobile is not unionized, I guess, but AT&T is, and how unions traditionally have helped gay employees get the, or gay and trans employees get the protections they need, which again is not something I was necessarily familiar with. And all of a sudden, I even started to say, okay, well, I'm glad did not mention any of this, so I still think glad, you know, had a little sweetheart deal with AT&T, honestly. Um, but as far as the gay workers groups talking about this, they found an angle that was relevant, credible, believable, you know, passed the laugh test, and may actually have been true as far as unions actually being able to help LGBT employees. That is interesting to me. That's something I would consider writing about. But again, it's a matter of what I worry about sometimes, and whether it's union issues or whether we had talked about this before the talk today, and I'll sort of wrap up with this, um, I remember all the time, in the last 20 years, gay people always tell me, telling me, we've got to be pro-choice because we're gay. And they're like, okay, why? I mean, I am pro-choice, but why? Well, 
Well, because, you know, we're all together in this on the left, and it's the same thing you hear about union stuff, frankly. You know, we're all together. You've got to be pro-union. And finally, somebody explained to me, and I am a lawyer, and I finally did the reading and saw that all of all of them, there aren't too many, but the top uh, court cases that we've won on, including you know, recent Supreme Court cases, you read through the case and all of a sudden you read that the decision by the judges is all based on all the pro-choice decisions, Griswold and everything else, Roe v. Wade. And you go, oh my god, these gay rights wins we've had are all based on pro-choice victories. And if we lose all the pro-choice victories, the gay rights court victories are going out the window too. And you go, okay, now I actually get it. You know, I mean, I kind of, I, I call it derisively sort of the kumbaya argument of, we all should just agree and work on each other's issues because we're all together. Good. Try telling that to my readers. When on my gay blog they say, why the hell are you writing about a union? I appreciate it, but this is a gay blog. You know, or, again, you're a national politics blog. I don't want to know about minors in Southern Illinois unless you tell me how it impacts national politics. And it's just a matter of, a lot of these issues do have a confluence, but I think, you know, we need to stop just assuming everyone either does agree with us or should agree with us if they're good people and start thinking strategically like a media person would or a PR person and saying, okay, how can I sell this? And when you do sell it, then, you know, what like Marcy had said or some of the issues I've jumped on or other, other people I've worked with, where we've been able to really blow stuff up the national media and get other people on board by showing people the more interesting angle, the more relevant angle, or the sexier angle of the story. So I'll leave it at that. And that leads to Joan as well. I think Joan Carter, um, uh, front page blogger on Daily Post from the beginning. And um, I not think quite the beginning. Not the beginning? Okay, close to it. You're dating her. That's I'm not so <laughs> 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 Daily Post well, is like 20 years 